Hello internet, I'm back. Didn't take too long. Just gonna do a little video lesson on the, the uh, chicken picking metal guitar shred solo, whatever the hell I call it. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. So here's what's going on. First thing I'm gonna show you the riff. Uh, I'm gonna explain a little bit how I'm thinking about all this and why I choose the notes. Uh, say hi to the robot from Metal Metal Beater's Jewel from the Lego Movie. Have I ever told you I like the Lego Movie? Anyways, uh, here's the riff. It goes like this. I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. Oops. <laughs> nice. So, that being said, I'm going to change to guitar, uh, guitars from one I don't like so much, it does have seven strings though, to one I like much more, however it only has six strings, but now that we've gone over the riff, uh, this is like my thought process. If you're a guitar noob, you might not know this if you play guitar for more than 20 minutes, uh, you notice that whatever you're playing over uh, dictates the, the choices of notes that you can use. It's sort of like, it, it, it sets the canvas on which you paint on. So, um, it's a very frigid major kind of thing. The riff, which is the most metal of all scales. Frigid major, just like the fr regular frigid scale. But you raise the third. And an infinite uh, amount of metal has been written in the scale. Uh, if you're a Swedish-born metalhead like myself, it's like the first scale you ever learn, and, and then you know you riff in that riff. So we're in the key of A. It's on a seventh string, where the low string, the B string, is tuned down to an A. So the whole thing is an A. So my options were because I had to write this little solo over this interlude thing. So I have a A frigid major kind of riff, and and one thing that's cool that everybody knows and everybody uses is because it, it sounds pretty dope. If you take the frigid major scale, which would be these notes, and you play every other note starting from the second note, you get a diminished arpeggio. Not a diminished scale, mind you. That's different. It's a diminished arpeggio. And it sounds really bitchin' over these kinds of chords. Uh, uh. So what I did with was I also tried to get away from Ingve uh, sorta owns this. You know. Though. By the way, if you think it looks like I'm wearing the exact same clothes as I was in the other video, it is because I am. I made that video last night. This is the next morning. I haven't even showered. I just put on the same clothes and go about my day. I can easily get four days out of a t-shirt. Anyways, so since Ingve, you know, owns sweeping arpeggios, I'd say Loomis. Uh, Jeff Loomis owns uh, doing that or diminished arpeggios. I gotta figure out something else you know, with my uh, playing country music has uh, you know weaseled its way into my metal playing quite a bit. So I figured, fuck, I'm just gonna chicken pick the shit out of this. So here's what I'm doing. If you don't know what chicken picking is, it's when you use both your pick and your um, your fingers to pluck with. Uh, you know those kinds of things. Usually done with a lot less distortion. Uh, a much less redneck way is to call it hybrid picking, but I like chicken picking. I'm from the south, south of Sweden, but you know, still the south. So chicken picking it is. And here's what I did. So I took my, I know it's over an A, you know, if I go a half step above, I can use the diminished arpeggio, which is just minor thirds on top of each other. So to the next problem, like this riff is one bar is seven four and then two bars of four. So it's one two three four one two three one two three four one two three four. So I had to 
sort of make the licks fit. Um, I didn't want to play over the bars because I get super confused because it's really fast. I think it's like 215 beats per minute. I'm just slaying triplets like a mofo with my left hand. And if I'm not like hitting the once in each bar with a new phrase, uh, I'm like, ugh, forget about it. And you know, you gotta think you're, you're on stage, you're headbanging. Thousands of women throwing underwear at you. Uh, you know, and you're literally standing on a mountain of money. So you know, you're, you're, you're already off balance. So, you, And then I have to play over the bars. I don't think so. I'm gonna phrase everything and dump it to one in each bar. So, uh, Here's what I came up with. Here's my figure. Okay, so what I'm doing is just pull off, and I start this by plucking with my middle finger, my middle finger, my bad finger, as to call it. So I pluck, pluck the high E string with that one, do a pull off, grab the G string with my pick, and then I go back to plucking the E string. Then hammer on, so I use as much legato playing as I can, because it makes my life easier. And I just figure, follow that figure down. I don't string skip there though, I only string skip. The reason I like to string skip between the E and the G string and diminish stuff, because you land on the same frets, which makes life easier, uh, and I like that. And then I just turn that around. But at this point, I've reached 7 already. Da da da. Da 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 So that's seven, four plus three, right? Then I move up. That's the beauty of the diminished thing, like Ingrid taught us, right? But he stole it from Ulian Roth, but no one really talks about that. So then I move up to the 12th fret, do the exact same thing, but now I have two bars of four, so now I can do a long phrase. So that's for the next one. And I do the exact same thing with my right hand. Like whenever I string skip, I will pluck the higher string and pick the lower string. So pluck, pick, pluck, pick, pick, pluck, pick, pluck, pick, pluck, pluck, pick, pluck. So pluck being finger, pick being pick. Ah. Oops. Then I move up to the uh, 15th fret, do the exact same thing as the first one, because now we're back in 7. Then up to the uh, 18th fret and do the exact same as the second fr uh, phrase. Okay, cool. So that's the whole first part. If I put it all together, it sounds like this. Uh, so yeah, that's the first diminished phrase. Then I figured I gotta put a little bit of semi-melodic stuff in the middle, because no one wants to hear someone who shreds all the time. You hear that, Michelangelo Becho? Anyways, yeah, he yeah, has way more fans than I do, so who would like to talk? Anyway, so here's what I did. I really like dissonant stuff, and I'm still considering this to be like a A flat 9, A7 flat 9 kind of thing. Basically, Play every other note in the uh, for a scale. You get a root, middle third, perfect fifth, uh, and a flat seven. You know, Roy Orbison would like those chords. And then the next note would be the flat nine. So that's sort of how I'm approaching this. And I like dissonant stuff. So here's what I did: start on root, just pull off. I think to the. Uh, uh, 13th fret, which would be a flat 6, or flat 13. Then I get this beautiful interval, which in context sounds pretty cool, I think. And what would one of my solos be without some retarded country bending? I mean, if I do this, no one would... Straight up country, right? But now we're in diminished land. So I bend from the uh, 
the A sharp or the B flat there. And bend that up to a C sharp. Then I grab the G on top. And here I do pick everything up with. I might chicken pick it too, that is. I might pluck the hard enough. Slide down. And here's more just getting dissonant notes. Like, I'm, I'm always looking at how does this relate to the chord. The chord being A, landing on the 7 and the 5th. That gives me a nice little flat 9 to octave thing. So I'm holding these two notes and moving the note in the middle so it goes from a lot of tension to a little bit less tension. My fingers kind of hurt from doing this yesterday. Uh, I think I had 184 takes of this album. That is, you know, recording one bar at a time sometimes because it's fucking fast. This time's hard. Anyways. Uh, So that's that part, and then we have the ending part, more triplets. Uh, by the way, a triplet is three notes in the place of two or in the place of one. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. In case you don't know, there's a lot of confusion about triplets, especially with drummers for some freaking reason. Uh, uh, a lot of people think triplets is three fast notes. Dig it out. That's not a triplet necessarily. Okay, so three notes in place of two or in place of one. Da -ka -da -da -ka -da -da -ka -da -da easy way to know is it a triplet? It's going triple, a triple, a triple, a triple. Okay, so now you know what a triplet is too. Awesome! I'm learning so many things. Uh, we're back in triplet land, and again, I'm looking at my A with the important notes to me here is like the seven major thirds. Important. They they carry the most information, so to speak. Flat 9 is pretty cool, flat 6 is pretty cool, so I, I like those sounds. It, I look at guitar as sort of like the intervals is uh, like the seasoning. I'm, I'm making a stew, and, and the different intervals is like the kind of seasoning I put in this stew. So if I want it to taste a little more like this, I will flavor it with this kind of interval. So, that being said, I tried to come up with cool patterns. So here's what I came up with. So I think this over an A. Okay, so I'm starting on the 17th fret, pulling off. I think I start this with my pick. Then a string skip again. And I'm basically gonna map out like an uh, A7 chord with some added harmonies in it, or added. Uh, that is spices. Check a pick again. And here we have that flat 9 to octave, up to 7. And here we have the um, flat 6 or flat 13. Then I land on the major third, which is a good thing. If you're fucking around uh, with um, different intervals that have a lot of tensions, it's a good thing to start on something that's not so hard on the ear and end with something that's not so hard on the ear. Uh, and then you can sort of do whatever you want in the middle. Tension and, and release, as they say. It's kind of like fapping. Anyways! Ah, I suck. Mind you, this is over 7. Here comes the next phrase again. I'm still over an A. If you learn your cage system, you have a C shape of an A major chord right here. So, I really like the augmented uh, triad thing, which is like you take a regular major chord, and then you just add the, or raise the fifth. You hear this in movies all the time when they're trying to uh, do a little mystery or uh, enchantment. Or if you're John Williams, you know, most of Star Wars is based around the augmented chord. So, and I knew I wanted to, like, I've already established a pattern. So I want to kind of follow that somehow, but not quite. 
we're gonna imagine this over an A. So that's a little Indiana Jonesy to me. Back to where it's a lost art. So that's the first, you know, just going over an A major. Next figure looks like this. And now, here's my A. There we all know this arpeggio. So I'm sort of fucking with that. And I'm always sort of carefully choosing what intervals to play and which ones not to play. And that's actually like this, the filler part of the next riff. Ah, that's it. I think that's what it is. And I'm doing the same thing here, like whenever I'm playing a higher string, I, I pluck it, and when I play a lower string, I pick it. Hence the chicken picking. And I also use hammer-ons and pull-ups wherever I can. If I was Aldo Miola or, or Nuno Betancourt or John Petrucci, I would probably just pick this whole thing, but I can't do that. So, or if I was Michelangelo Bacio. Um, So that whole part would be this. And that's it. So, um, Phrygian major riff, and then how can I manipulate that and, and just like play over the chords in a way that sounds cool. Uh, if you look at the info box, I put a link to the tab. It's on my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com, John Holt Music, I believe it is. Anyways, the, the link is, you know, just look down there, you'll find it. And uh, let me know if this was helpful. Have a good one. Bye bye.